of people. Um, I worked with them for 20, 30 years. They are hardworking people. They are down to earth. They go the extra mile for the, the, the employers. Um, the point I'm trying to make about immigration is not only that we want to limiting or disallowing anybody coming in. My point is that to manage, to manage our immigration system. Because once the people that are already here, it's hard to kick them out or send them back home because it costs so much. They already are part of the society. Um, like 20 years ago, I heard uh, Ju uh, you know, the um, uh, New York mayor, Juliana, said it cost $20,000 to deport one illegal immigrant from New York City. Now, that's 20 years ago. Today, probably 80,000, probably 100,000. And you talk about 10, 11, 12 million people? Uh, that's impossible. They are already um, join our society, and, and we have to manage it to make sure that they, well, you talk about it, right, sir? No, not hand down or you want to hand up. You want to help them. So allow them to pay taxes. Allow them, you know, you, they, they might not have ever have the right to vote because they came illegally. But we have to allow them to become a part of the society. That's my way, way of thinking. In order for us to do that, it's not my knowledge or how to do it. It's about our country. You know, we have to have some good leaders to share our viewpoints so that they can make the right decision. I don't think I'm that smart, but I do know what the problem is. Now, when Mr. Donald Trump talk about the uh, uh, illegal immigrant coming from Mexico, I understand his concern because when the illegal immigrant comes into this country, if they don't feel like this is the home for their future, they really, you know, likely to send their money, their earning money, back home instead of spending the money here in America, buying a home, buying automobiles, and um, you know, become a part of our society and take advantage of our social system. And I can understand that. So I understand certain concerns, certain unfairness to the American people, but at the same time, once they are here, we have to recognize that the existence. How will we manage it? That's up to our open topic for another day. Now, one thing that I want to emphasize, though, is that the reason that I think that the war is important, but it will never happen, I don't agree with it. Look at Great War of China. They built it with millions of people's lives, and today it's just a sightseeing. So I think the Mexico War may not be helpful to America. You know, maybe it's 80 years from now, you know, Mexico is doing so well, maybe we have people immigrating to Mexico instead of the other way around. So you never know about history. The way I'm saying is that the war may not be helpful, but to stopping the drug coming from Mexico is very, very important. And I think that is one of the reasons that our healthcare is so expensive. Forgive me, my friends and neighbors, because they are very costly to stop somebody have drug addiction. Very costly. When I was brought up from Hong Kong with my mother, single mother at that time. The first thing that she taught me, no smoking, no drinking, and no drug, because you become a different person. It's so true. When I'm watching my friends, my families, and the people that I don't know, TVs, the drug addiction is a major problem today in America. That is the only reason that I said Mr. Donald Trump has some good idea about the war. It's not about the war, it's about awareness. I know the war will never work. I know nobody is going to pay for it. 20 years from now, whoever built that war will think, oh, that was not a good move. But what we can do is secure our border and make sure that drug does not come through our border. One way to pay it, the way that I'm um, not very intelligent, but is that if we find that drug is coming through a certain country, not naming names, we should burn it, build it to them, the cost of the drug that our law enforcement uh, to utilize our, our labor or whatever the cost to find them, destroy them, and build them. And that may be stopping some of the drug problems coming to our United States. I care about America. I care about American people. When I'm watching those famous singers, um, uh, uh, writers and, uh, and, and football players 
the people I know, when they lost their life, movie stars, because of illegal drugs, it broke my heart. And this, when Mr. Clinton said something to Mr. Trump, your most admirable thing about you and your family because your children. I want all American people have great children. We are only moving forward and able to move forward with the right mindset. Keep our this dream, American dream, alive. Keep moving forward, keep trying. One thing I admire Mr. Clinton is her determination. She never stop. She always have a dream, she have a goal, she try to achieve her dream and her goal. We all have to learn from it. I learn a lot from Sanders. He is the one significant, most important and powerful person in my life. Not because what he, he has done, but because his heart, the heart for American people, the younger generation. Do I agree with everything that he said? Of course no. But like we don't have to respect somebody, because they have a different belief or different platforms. It's all about what they believe in. Is it for the common good of the people? Now, by saying that, I want to turn my lecture back to you and let you express you know, any other objects well, that I you wouldn't talk about. I think about. that what you were explaining was a mutual respect for one another. And Correct. perhaps that's where the whole breakdown is, is happening here in our country. Thank you for bringing a, that up. A lot of people think it's, well, maybe the n lack of church attendance or family. The fact of the matter is, it's lack of caring about what the other people does or thinks. I respect what you do and think. It's not always what my cup of tea is. Absolutely. But I respect your right to say that. Mm -hmm. I don't particularly like when I watch a football game and there are people on the sidelines when they're playing the American, uh, the, the national anthem, not standing, taking a knee. I detest that, but I will fight for the right for them to be allowed to do that because only here in America can you do that. I respect that. However, well, um, if I choose not to watch that guy play football, then I just <laughs> Well, you know, I want to uh, thank you for picking up that object too, you know. And I, I always a family man. I always uh, remember that, you know, my mother's teaching, you know, be conservative. You know, um, uh, taking care of the family, education is important and all that. But one day, uh, one of my best friends um, taught me a lesson because we're talking about flag burning. I said, you know, I came from an old school. You know, I came from Hong Kong, my education, respect elderly, respect our country. How can we have younger generation to burn our flag? That's the last thing that I can imagine. But then uh, my friend um, uh, Duke, and he taught me. He said, if you want other people to understand you and they are not able to or don't care about what you are saying, you want to bring in their fullest attention and you want to do something dramatic to, so that you can speak to them, so they can give you um, more of credit. If that is the only way that to capture their opinion or their caring is burning an American flag, so be it. That day, I opened my mind, I opened up my heart. It's not about us, it's about everybody. When you live in America, you have the freedom of choice. If you want to burn a flag, you're welcome to do it. It's That's your power. But in the meantime, if I go into a church, if I go into a football game, if they have traditions, and saying that if you come to our church, you have to play or you do, you have a choice, you don't have to go in there. So in that regard, I'm not sure I'm on the borderline should those people and not respecting our American anthem. I'm not sure because I respect the human right, their choices, but at the same time, we have the right of the NFL, we have the right of the people that in that stadium. So I'm sure that, you know, the history will give us a better answer. We, I'm too small or too ignorant. We, we, we respect their right to do that. We also have the right to not to watch them. And the NFL has been losing money big time because of this. I don't know if you're aware of that. Well, you know, money is uh, not uh, our uh, topic of discussion, but the man 
uh, that uh, you know we, we have to respect our law. Actually, our money is a topic of the discussion. It's because we vote with our dollars. If I want to watch that, that's some well. When you talk dollars. about that, you know, it will break many people's heart. You know, when you're thinking about money is everything. Look at all these politicians that raise millions and millions of dollars, and we are not able to fix the water problem in Flint. Come on, you know, and. And uh, you know that's that's another way of them just thinking of themselves, which is my whole point of this part of their discussion is this that when we take youngsters who are just barely able to walk and teach them that they are the most important person in the whole world, they grow up to be just that. The whole world focuses on them. What we need to do instead is to teach them to say yes, ma'am, no, sir, yes, sir. I agree. We teach them. What happens is. The breakdown is more basic than just the church, the family. The breakdown is lack of proper manners. See, when you teach someone manners, what you're doing is you're teaching that person to respect the other person's feelings. Now, if you have no respect for the other person's feelings, you'll do things like running red lights. I have never seen so many red light runners. Two and three people going one red light. I'm, I hardly ever see anyone using a, a turn signal. That's just giving the person behind you a certain amount of respect. And how can you cap somebody if you respect or worry about what their feelings are? But if you have no intent of really caring or worrying about what their feelings are, it's easy to do that sort of thing. So that's where our basic breakdown is. Well, that is one of the <laughs> most productive points that I think we can bring it out to our society today. Talk about respect. You know, when we talk about leader, what makes a good leader? The leader is to listen to us with the L, right? You learn from our problems. You evaluate the situation with the E. You act with solutions. You develop programs with the D. And number E, you're empowering people. The last one is the R, is to reproduce the next leader and also respect each other. That was to make a good, great leader. Right, L E A D E R. That's what makes a great leader. Unfortunately, I was interviewed by a radio host about, um, I would say, three, four years ago. He asked me, Since you have come to this country for 40 plus years now, and uh, what do you see the most changes in the last 10, 15, 20 years? And I said, Education. He was in shock. He does not understand what I was talking about. What I was talking about is our education system, our children are smarter than ever. The computer, um, you know, um, um, uh, the internet, everything, they are so much more smarter than when I was at the age. But the math, 25 times 25, 625, they don't, they don't have those concepts. They probably don't know how to write, you know, cursefully. More importantly, they are not talking about family value, talk about how we can improve our life in our society. Respect is a very, very key in our society. That's the first thing I learned when I was a child. I hope our next generation, our next educators, Please revisit our teaching. Other than all the technical things, how about personal growth? Help them to learn how to communicate. People don't talk anymore. They text, right? They, they lose the communication skill. When you don't talk, become a robot, it's easy to fight against each other because there's no passion in between people. Please teach them how to understand math better because if you don't understand math, People take advantage of you. That's why people get more money in better education, take advantage of the people that have less education. We want to help our younger generation understand math, spelling, and understand life better. Let me give you an example. It breaks my heart to see one individual, 22 years old, just get off from college, nothing that she or he had done anything wrong. They found a job, they want to go to work. So they come to a place to buy an automobile. They cannot qualify because when they were younger, they had medical bills. When they do find a 
cosine, the interest rate was like 25%.